Acting. What is acting? Oh my god, it's so it's so hot. It's it's June. I shouldn't be wearing this. Let's really get into it, okay? Okay, whew, this is so much better. Hi, I'm Sunita the Deshpande. Um, you might know me most recently from Daredevil of Seaman and Bee. I'm doing this video today because, first of all, check in. How is everybody during this pandemic and world crisis and world awakening? I hope you're taking care of yourselves and your mental health. It's 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 hard when you haven't really slept for the past I don't know 40 nights very well. Murder hornets. So uh, I have gotten a few. Uh, questions on Instagram and uh, through Twitter uh, from a bunch of people asking hey I'm interested in acting do you have any advice or I'm a person of color I'm a woman of color I'm a white guy how do I get started I'm in a small town I don't have anyone in my family that is in acting what can I do do I have to go to university for it thank you for thinking that I know what I'm doing I really don't a lot of the time, but if I can give you one lesson today that you can take away is do not let anyone in this world ever discourage you. This is an incredibly non-linear path. It is a heartbreaking path and it's a tough path, but when you can get the work and when you can do what you love, it is an incredibly rewarding path too. So if this is something that you feel is your life calling, that you've always wanted to tell stories and work with really talented other people and really stretch yourself and build your empathy as a human being by playing other people's roles. I mean, I, I applaud you, go for it. I'd also suggest number two is to be very careful who you share your dreams with. I've noticed in life a lot of times that the most well-meaning people have the worst advice. They just do because they're either watching out for you or they're trying to make sure that you don't make them feel less than because they're not doing something with their life. People are gonna come up with the worst things to tell you and they're gonna be like, oh my God, my friend wanted to be an actor and he died. Like people are gonna come up with the worst things to tell you. Being a children's book author is a difficult path. Being a finance CEO is a difficult path. Being a doctor is a difficult path. <sighs> These are all very difficult jobs and acting and being an artist and paying your bills as an artist, unless you have nepotism working for you or you're married to someone or have a boyfriend or girlfriend that's um, going to support you or parents, you need to have a way to pay your bills um, and support your career. I mean, I have friends who are graphic designers and they're doing work in their pajamas and then they're going to be able to go to their auditions. So I would find a job that is really helpful in the way of you're able to run to auditions when you need to. If you have someone who is like, I don't know, if like Al Pacino is your godfather, right? You're gonna be pretty hooked up. You would just maybe have to make one phone call or whatever, I don't know. Do you know who my godfather is? Nobody, Indian people don't have godfathers, we're Hindus. But like the thing is, you have to create your own path for yourself. No matter what small town you're in, there's always gonna be some kind of performing arts center. And if there isn't, you can absolutely go on Zoom and take a Zoom class anywhere in the world. There are so many Zoom groups with actors and writers just looking to play and work together. I guarantee you, if you look, there are gonna be so many on Facebook near you or on Instagram near you. If I could recommend any podcasts, especially for beginning actors, I highly recommend the podcast Audrey Helps Actors. It's um, so helpful. She has given so much great information. Um, I would definitely look into the self tapes from Self Tape May. And then I would just try to find any way that you can get involved in your community. If you have someone in your extended family that went into the performing arts, if there's a performing arts school near you that you can give a call or email or find out more from, if you can look at any videos such as like Larry Moss, I think is an incredible acting teacher. Uh, he has tons of videos on YouTube. He also has an incredible book called The Intent to Live. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio works with him all the time and talks about him all the time and glowing reviews. Anyone that says that they got somewhere on their own without coaches, they're completely lying. And the number one thing I would say for you to do is right now, write your own parts. It's something I avoided for a long time. And the reason I avoided it was because A, I just wanted to be an actor first and that was it. And B, because I really didn't think anyone would want to hear my stories. 
I really didn't. I had only grown up seeing beautiful white girls on TV. When I wrote uh, my first short film, A Sorry for Pallavi, I really didn't think anyone was going to want to hear about an Indian American girl. And I also didn't think it was going to resonate with anybody else. And then after I had put on the play, which had gotten into Samuel French off Broadway, a white guy, straight white guy comes up to me and he's like, oh my gosh, I've totally had to go through the same issue myself. So the really cool thing is that no matter who you are or what you're creating, it doesn't matter who you think your demographic or your audience is gonna be because a person can come out of the woodworks who's totally not like you in any way and you guys could still have such a similar experience and connect over that. And that's what makes theater and music and art so magical, it connects humanity. Um, so don't ever feel that like you can't put yourself out there. I'm telling you, more than ever right now, the world wants to hear your stories. It wants to hear your specific stories. And the more specific you get, actually, in your stories, the more it's going to universally resonate. That's just one of those weird things. I was so specific in my story, and it got into 40 film festivals. We got into freaking amazing Oscars qualifying Rhode Island Film Festival, and we won for Best Comedy Short. I mean, and I had to do that for myself because I was noticing my casting, a lot of people were like, they didn't think I could do comedy. And I was like, well... I've taken like five million years of improv classes. I hope I know how to do comedy. But you really have to show people sometimes, a lot of times, all the time, right? So I would definitely write for myself. Um, I think I've said definitely like more than Rain Man by now. So you're welcome for that. I would highly recommend finding a Zoom group near you and sharing your work every week or every two weeks or wherever you can because there are people who really want to see your words and hear your words. Right now is super exciting in the sense that you have Facebook, you have Instagram, you could make a silly little 60 second video. It doesn't matter if you get a thousand likes or if you get one like. It means that you just put something out there and hey, now you're acting, right? At least you're doing something. If someone doesn't like it, big deal. You created and you've moved forward. And so many times the baby steps, uh, it's, it's the baby steps that hold all the magic. God is in the details. Every baby step is just gonna move you further and further and further. So don't feel that you need to move with a huge leap. One of my favorite shows, um, besides Daredevil, is Schitt's Creek. And what I really love that Daniel Levy said was that all we wanted to do was make each season better. When you watch the show to see the journey of these actors, and the script's just getting stronger and their storylines just getting stronger and by the end you're weeping. I mean, I know I was. I'm such a fan of that show. Yes, it was because of talent, but it was also because it was those little baby steps that moved them forward. How can we make it a little bit better? How can we make it a little bit better? So I know I'm talking to a thousand miles an hour right now, whatever, I'm a Gemini. Watch the actors that super duper impress you. For me, I love Leonardo DiCaprio's work, especially when he does improv and um, I really love the work of John C. Riley. He's so much range. And when you start to look at the actors that have really inspired you, you get to see their path, right? And then you kind of have to just do a reverse flip. Like, how did they get where they were? What were they in? And you can find out what acting school they went to and what their philosophies were. And there's so many podcasts. I know John C. Riley's kind of like shy, but the way he opened up on the Mark Maron pad podcast, What the Fuck podcast, it was just one of my favorite podcasts ever. And there's also one with Brad Pitt um, and Leonardo DiCaprio recently about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So I hope that helps you. I'm so excited about the people who've reached out. Thank you so much. And um, if I have helped in any way today, um, it's been an honor. I just really hope that you follow your dreams and really now is the time because the world right now, can't you feel it? I mean, I know I can. Right now is the time that the world is changing and the world needs all voices, all voices. And I don't want straight white men to think that we don't want to hear their voices, do we do? We want to hear everyone's voices, right? So we can keep this conversation going and keep moving forward. And remember, I mean, if anyone makes fun of artists, what have we been watching this entire time? We've been watching some Netflix, some Hulu, we've been watching some movies, we've been listening to some music, we've been listening to podcasts. We need artists. It is an important job. And don't worry about being famous or making lots of money. Those are wonderful things and they do happen. But the truth is it's a calling. This is a calling and I hope you follow it. All right, have a great day.
and um, make sure you create.